Now, this identity uh, is called Euler identity because Euler proved this for uh, the uh, polyhedron, right? He observed it and uh, showed this. And it has been generalized to graphs uh, later. And uh, it's called uh, Euler identity. So, let uh, uh, G be a connected plane graph. Okay? Plane graph means that it comes with the embedding. Right? Because without the embedding, you cannot talk about the set of faces. So we talk about uh, plane graph when you have the planar graph with a fixed embedding. So let G be a connected plane graph. Okay? So we'll assume the graph is connected. Then the following identity holds, that is uh, the number of vertices of the graph plus number of faces of the embedding is equal to the number of edges plus two. So again, uh, examples. So if you take any tree, there is no cycle. There is only one phase. Right? The number of uh, vertices is uh, six. Number of edges is five. Right? And uh, that's it. So you have the identity. Similarly, you take any other uh, graph. You have number of vertices seven here. Number of faces is four. And then uh, you have number of edges uh, to be nine. So this is uh, the identity. Now we want to prove this. So how will you prove this? So try to see if you can come up with a proof for this by yourself. And if not, uh, proceed further. Okay. So here is the uh, proof. So we use induction uh, on the number of faces. There are several ways to prove this. We want to prove it by induction on the number of faces. So if the uh, number of faces is equal to one, right? So when is the number of faces equal to one uh, for an embedding on the plane? Only if there are no cycles, because if there is a cycle, the cycle already, uh, you know, uh, separates the region into at least two parts, right? So therefore, when the faces uh, are equal to one, then uh, you cannot have uh, several, uh, you cannot have any cycle. So therefore, the graph is acyclic. And since we are assuming the graph to be uh, connected, the graph must be a tree, right? So, when the graph is a tree, the claim is that the identity always holds. So, can you tell me why? Okay. So, think about this uh, and see why the identity holds if the graph is a tree. Okay, the identity that number of edges plus number of faces is equal to number of edges plus two, okay. because we already know that. Uh, for a tree, the number of edges is equal to number of vertices minus one, right? Number of edges is equal to number of vertices minus one. So therefore, number of vertices plus the number of faces, which is equal to one, is actually equal to number of edges uh, plus two, because number of edges is number of vertices minus one, right? So that is the proof. Hence, we have the base case, right? So once we have the base case, we can assume uh, the result holds for all planar graphs where the number of faces is less than k for some k uh, greater than uh, 1, right? So assume that uh, the result holds for connected uh, uh, plane graphs with uh, k uh, greater than 1 uh, faces. Now, Let us take, uh, let us take any graph, right, uh, with, uh, uh, with more than, uh, more than, uh, uh, more than, uh, let's say, k phases, right? So take any graph with more than k phases, k plus 1 phases. And then we will uh, we will use uh, the index, right? So how do you how do you do that? So again, uh, maybe it is uh, it is going to be illuminating if you think about this for a few minutes and see can you solve now uh, this by induction, right? Can you complete the proof by induction? So I will let you think uh, for a few minutes and then uh, pause the bar, right? Video and uh, then uh, continue uh, uh, after that, you know, spending some time uh, thinking about this, okay? So, what we will do is that we will assume that the graph has, uh, you know, 
uh, k uh, greater than one basis and then we will uh, consider the uh, cycles in this graph right because if there is no cycle we know that there is only there is only one uh, uh, phase so so take any phase right any phase boundary right of the uh, bounded phase right uh, any phase boundary is going to be a cycle right so take the phase boundary of any bounded phase for example uh, you know the a b c d uh, phase here right in this graph If you look at uh, this particular, if you look at this particular uh, phase, uh, you know, it has four edges, right, in the boundary, right? And now take any one of the uh, edges that you want, right? You take any one of the edges that you want, and then uh, what you do is that you, you look at this particular edge, right? So if you take uh, the, the edges in the boundary of a cycle, that edge, separates exactly two phases, right? That is what you should see, right? If you take any edge, right? No matter which edge uh, is that, if it is in the boundary of a cycle, right? Of the phase, then that edge belongs to exactly two phases. The phase, which is one of the internal phases, right? And then the one which is uh, the external phase in this case, right? And uh, uh, if you take, for example, the other edge, right? This one, then it separates two regions, right? Again, two phases. Uh, and these two phases are, uh, you know, not joined by, I mean, like uh, in, the, in, the, in the embedding, right? If you, if you, if you remove the uh, points of the embedding, then these are disconnected components in the uh, R minus uh, the graph, chip, right? So if you look at these components, they are basically separated by this edge, and this edge belongs to exactly two phases, right? In the boundary of exactly two phases. So we have uh, we have this uh, observation, right? Now, what happens if I remove this one edge from the graph? Right? So look at the graph G minus this edge G. If I remove the edge from the graph, then right, I have removed let's say C D the edge C D. So if I remove C D from the graph, then the edge which was separating these two regions is no more present and therefore these two regions gets connected into a single region right this entire area becomes one single region right so what happens with the number of phases in the graph and i remove one edge of in the boundary of a cycle the number of phases decreases by exactly one right because two phases has been merged into one phase and nothing else happened to other phases. And therefore, I get a graph with one less number of phases, right? Now, if the number of phases is strictly less, I can use induction now, right? So I use induction because by induction hypothesis, anything less than K, right, uh, the result holds. And therefore, you know, I started with a graph with exactly K phases and now I have removed one edge the new graph has exactly k minus 1 phases. So therefore, I can use induction. Okay. So how do I use induction? Now let, uh, if you look at the, uh, you know, uh, the cycle, right? So here is a formally uh, written down argument. So C be any cycle, right? And E be any edge of uh, the cycle, right? So the, the edge G lies on the boundary of exactly two distinct phases. And deleting the edge E, right, uh, these two phases get connected and merged into a single phase. Now, the graph G minus E is uh, connected. Uh, and can you tell me why, right? So, so um, the claim is that after removing the edge, the graph is still connected. Right? This is not necessarily true always. But in this particular case, I, I claim that the graph G minus E is connected. So again, uh, pause the video and think for a few minutes uh, before continuing. Now, uh, 
the graph g minus e is connected because e was part of a cycle right so if uh, if i remove one x from part of one cycle then uh, it is not going to disconnect the graph again uh, you can formally prove this uh, you know uh, using the arguments uh, that we have studied before and uh, once you have this uh, it is easy right you have a graph which is uh, connected and uh, the number of phases is less so therefore by induction hypothesis it satisfies the Euler identity, right? So therefore, for the graph G minus E, the number of edges in G minus E plus number of phases in G minus E must be equal to the number of edges in G minus E plus two, right? So the Euler identity holds, right? Now, uh, what we know is that the number of uh, phases uh, is exactly right one less than the number of phases in g right so the, this our uh, uh, equation is true number of edges also has decreased exactly by one right that's how i got g minus e it deleted exactly one edge but what happened to the number of vertices it remains the same now if you look at the earlier identity the number of vertices in g minus e is equal to the number of vertices in g right this is actually equal to the uh, number of edges in uh, g on the other hand, I removed, I, I subtracted exactly one from the one term in the left side and exactly one term, uh, one uh, from the uh, one term in the right hand side. So the identity remains the same. Right? So therefore, uh, cardinality of V of G plus cardinality of F of G, right? Uh, the number of phases of G equal to the number of edges in G plus two, right? This also holds. So I just added. Uh, or, or, or subtracted, whichever way you want to look at, uh, one from uh, both sides of the identity. So therefore, we have the proof of Euler identity. So for any connected uh, plane graph, right, the number of vertices plus number of uh, phases uh, equal to the number of edges plus two. Now you can ask, what happens when the graph is not connected? Okay? So uh, I leave it as an exercise for you to figure out uh, what happens if the graph has several components. Now, uh, here is a uh, corollary. Okay? So let G be uh, planar, right? In every embedding of uh, the graph, uh, G on the plane, the number of phases remains the same. Right. You can have several embeddings of the graph, right? But, uh, you know, for example, I will show you, uh, you know, the uh, graph with the different uh, embeddings. Uh, let us take one example. So let us look at this graph, right? This was this embedding. Uh, it's a it's a planar graph, right? Uh, with a plane embedding. Now uh, look at uh, another embedding of the same graph. Now, uh, this is a different embedding of the graph because if you if you look at the uh, you know if you look at the cycles right of the phase length right so look at the length of the phase the phases in this embedding right you have a three uh, cycle here there is a three cycle here there is a four cycle here and then there is a uh, six cycle uh, boundary on the outer outer face but on the other hand in this embedding you have uh, you know the phases uh, have uh, length uh, three three then uh, one two three four five right and uh, again the boundary of this phase is five right here it was three three four and six right so uh, the you now the embedding is different right so the embeddings are different but then 
you can have you know several possibilities for uh, you know, different graphs but in no matter what uh, this uh, earlier theorem tells you that uh, the number of faces uh, in the plane are embedding must always be the same because the identity right uh, says that the number of vertices plus number of edges uh, number of faces is equal to number of edges plus two right? so therefore since all the other parameters are the same right number of vertices and number of edges remain the same uh, it must also follow that the number of faces uh, remain the same so it's a direct uh, corollary of the result now here is a nice homework question right uh, let g be a planar graph uh, with uh, k components generalize the euler identity satisfied by this graph right so the euler identity uh, for a graph with several components will be slightly different from the euler identity for a connected graph so can you find out this uh, identity so this is a, a nice homework now using this euler identity we can prove several interesting results right? so it's a very powerful tool actually and uh, what we are going to do uh, with this uh, uh, you know uh, first is to prove uh, that uh, the planar graphs uh, cannot have too many uh, edges so if you if you recall uh, graphs right uh, uh, an arbitrary graph Right. For example, if you take the complete graph on n vertices, you can have uh, n choose two edges, right? n into n minus 1 by 2, right? It's like close to n square uh, by 2, right? So you have, uh, you know, uh, many edges uh, possible in a graph. On the other hand, uh, one can prove that if a graph is planar, uh, you cannot have uh, too many, too many uh, edges for this graph, right? So if the number of vertices is fixed, then the number of edges is bounded, uh, you know, uh, by a factor. Now, how do you, uh, uh, you know, uh, prove this, and uh, why is this uh, the case, right? So, uh, an intuitive uh, way to look at this, why the number of edges is small, is that, you know, when you have an embedding, right, the the faces. Uh, you know the, the boundaries of the phases uh, must uh, you know all have this uh, uh, edges right that define the boundary of the phase. But now, if you if you take any phase right, uh, the phase boundary has uh, uh, at least three edges right. For any phase to be defined, you need at least three edges because you need cycles to define. Now. Uh, this is that like you know when you know when uh, you know when when the uh, when you know, when 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 you have a certain number of faces, then the number of edges uh, you know, uh, must be related to the number of uh, faces, right? Because you have the Euler identity which says that number of vertices plus number of uh, uh, edges uh, no number of faces is equal to number of edges plus two right so uh, since every phase has uh, at least three edges to be in the boundary right uh, this puts a restriction on the number of edges now we want to use this idea right uh, to prove formally that the number of edges in any planar graph uh, is at most uh, three times the number of vertices minus six for uh, n at least uh, you know three for n is equal to 2, uh, you, know, you have this obvious counter example, right? the trivial case, where uh, you have uh, two uh, vertices, one edge, right? where the identity is uh, slightly violated. So, uh, if n is at least 3, then we have the number of edges in the uh, planar graph is at most 3 times the number of vertices minus 6. So uh, the proof uses the observation that every phase boundary has at least three edges. So what do we do? So we consider uh, an embedding of the graph G, and uh, we we suppose that uh, the graph has uh, 
uh, let's say uh, n matrices and uh, the number of edges uh, is denoted by m and uh, number of faces denoted by f. So the graph has n matrices, m edges and f faces. So what we need to prove is that m is less than or equal to 3n minus 6. Okay. So <clears throat> first of all, uh, we observe that if the number of uh, vertices is actually equal to 3, right? Uh, then uh, the number of edges possible, right, is also at most 3 because, uh, you know, even the complete graph on 3 vertices can have only 3 edges, right? And for n equal to 3, the identity is clearly true, right? So, therefore, uh, you know, because 3 into 3, 9 minus 6 is actually equal to 3. So, therefore, 3n minus 6, uh, m is at most 3n minus 6. Now, therefore, we will assume that n is at least 4 because the case 3 uh, is done, right? So, let us start with the assumption that we have at least 4 vertices and we have the identity, right? Euler identity says that the number uh, n, right? n number of vertices n plus number of vertices f, n plus f is equal to m minus uh, 2, right? Number of vertices plus uh, uh, is the number of edges plus 2 uh, is actually plus. Right, number of edges plus number of edges equal to number of edges plus. Now, <clears throat> since there are f phases, right, uh, n plus f, right, and f phases, let us call uh, these phases by uh, name, right, f1, f2, etc., ff, be the phases of the graph. Now, since each phase boundary, right, must have at least three edges, we know that. 3 times the number of phases, 3 times f, will be less than or equal to summation over all the uh, phases, the length of the phase, right? Length of the phase is the number of edges in the boundary of it, right? So, that is the uh, denoted by mod fi, right? So, summation uh, i equal to 1 to f, uh, length of fi will be, uh, for each fi, it is at least 3, therefore, it will be uh, greater than or equal to 3 times f. Right, but now what we know about uh, you know uh, the relation between the faces of a graph and the edges is that if you if you look at the boundaries of faces, right, uh, every edge right is incident to at most uh, two faces, right. So a face, an edge cannot be contributed or counted by uh, more than two faces, right. So in this summation an edge is only counted at most two times. So therefore, uh, you know, if you if you look at, uh, you know, length of, uh, you know, the boundary of a phase is basically the number of edges. So therefore, you will see that since an edge cannot be counted more than, uh, more than twice, uh, summation fi is less than or equal to two times m, right, twice the number of edges. So, uh, summation fi is uh, less than or equal to 2m. So now we have the identity 3 times f, right? 3 times the number of faces is less than or equal to 2 times m, which is the number of edges. We can now substitute this into the Euler identity, right? So Euler identity n plus f is equal to m plus 2. So substitute it here, right? So we have uh, 3 times f less than or equal to 2 times m and uh, 3 times now, if you multiply by 3 on the Euler identity, you will get 3 times f is equal to 3 times m minus n plus 2, right? Because uh, f is equal to m minus n plus 2. So, uh, which is less than or equal to 2 times m, right? So, now we get a relation uh, between m and n uh, because uh, transferring uh, m to the left and a uh, number of uh, vertices to the right, you will get that. Uh, 3m uh, minus uh, 2m, which is m, less than or equal to uh, 3n minus 6. Right? This is the identity that we were looking for. So, uh, for any planar graph, uh, you know, uh, g, we have shown that uh, you can have at most uh, 3n minus 6 edges. 
No, we uh, we use the identity because we assume we can assume that the graph is connected. Because if the graph is not connected, right? What we can do? We can uh, we can add uh, adjust to make it connected. Right? We you can add adjust to make it connected, and which will, will only uh, increase the number of edges. Right? So even after adding it, just to make it connected, we have the identity. Therefore, for any planar graph, we will see that uh, the uh, identity uh, holds true. Okay, so by proving it for connected graph, we could generalize to other graphs. So for arbitrarily planar graphs, now we have the identity. We can now use this uh, to prove several uh, results, right? This this idea, right? So. <clears throat> uh, so one way you can you know uh, immediately think of using this uh, theorem is that if a graph is given to you right and uh, you are asked to check whether the graph is planar all you have to uh, you know i mean uh, yeah, the first thing that you can do is to is to check if the number of edges is uh, more than 3 and minus 6 because if the number of edges is more than 3 and minus 6 you know immediately that the graph is not planar right because uh, uh, by by this result, we know that any planar graph will have at most three and minus six. So this can be used to prove uh, some uh, interesting results. So here is a homework: prove that uh, if G is a planar graph, then G contains a vertex of degree less than or equal to five. So uh, think of this and try to come up with a proof. So now we have the tool uh, to prove uh, that the uh, graph K5 is uh, not planar, right? So, uh, so you have these two non-planar graphs that I, I introduced to you earlier, right? And uh, uh, I claim that these two graphs are uh, not planar, right? And we did not prove it. Now we can prove it by using the Euler identity. So let us prove the first one. K5 is not planar. So K5 uh, case is very easy. K5 has five edges and uh, 10 edges, right? So uh, in our uh, uh, Euler identity form, uh, n is equal to five, m is equal to 10, right? And now three n minus six is uh, three into n, which is uh, three into five, 15 minus six, which is nine, which is uh, less than uh, 10, right? Which is uh, the number of edges in the graph, right? So since uh, you have more edges than uh, 3 and minus 6, the graph is definitely not planar by Euler identity, right? Using Euler identity, we are able to prove this uh, number of uh, edges bound. So the graph is immediately uh, not planar, right? K5 is not planar. Now let's try to apply the same for uh, K33, right? So we have K33, the graph K33 is not planar, right? So let us try to use the same idea. K33 has six vertices and uh, nine edges, right? And uh, what is uh, 3n minus 6, which is uh, 18 minus 6, which is 12. But uh, we, you know, the graph on uh, six vertices allow 12 edges to be, right, there, uh, you know, at most. But we have only nine edges, right, in the graph K33. So the identity does not tell us whether the graph is planar or not, because the you know uh, the the result that planar graph can have at most three n minus six edges is a one directional result right it does not tell that if the number of edges is less the graph is planar it only tells that if the number of edges is more then the graph is definitely not planar so uh, using this idea uh, immediately is not helping it, right directly we cannot use this bound uh, to count uh, uh, to show whether the graph K33 is planar or not. Now, how do you go about uh, proving K33 is not planar, right? So obviously, uh, the number of edges is not going to help us or, or directly by using this formula. Can you, can you uh, think of something about K33 and uh, how you can improve upon this? Okay, so think about this for uh, some time. And then uh, we will uh, we will uh, uh, look at the proof.
okay here is a, a different approach right so you have uh, uh, you know the graph k33 but the k33 is a bipartite graph right it's a complete bipartite graph now a bipartite graph has no odd length cycle so therefore k33 has no three cycles right? so when we were trying to prove this uh, you know a relation between the number of vertices and edges we use the fact that uh, you know every phase boundary has uh, you know at least uh, three edges right but now since the graph is bipartite you know that any phase boundary must have at least four edges so can we use this idea now to improve upon the uh, number of edges itself right so let us take uh, you know a bipartite uh, planar graph we know that uh, you know if it has uh, f faces then uh, you know uh, every phase boundary has at least uh, four edges and therefore four times f is less than or equal to again two times f, right by the same uh, idea right because uh, you know if you sum over all the uh, cardinalities of phases each phase boundary has at least uh, four but each edge is counted at most twice so therefore four of is less than or equal to two times n. now directly using euler identity four times m minus uh, n plus 2 which is f right is less than or equal to 2m and this tells you that 2m is less than or equal to 4n minus 8 or m is less than or equal to 2n minus 4 which is to say that uh, any planar bipartite graph right we did not use it k33 or anything right any planar bipartite graph has at most 2n minus 4 edges right so any planar graph has at most 3n minus 6 edges but any planar bipartite graph has at most 2n minus 4 edges now this is a much uh, improved uh, bound for the number of edges so therefore let us try to use it on k33 right so k33 uh, has uh, right uh, is bipartite and uh, 2n minus 4 for this graph is 2 into 6 minus 4 which is 8 right but we have nine edges in k33 so therefore bipartite planar graph uh, cannot have uh, uh, this many edges and this tells you that k33 is not planar so this way uh, you know you can use euler identity in several uh, forms right and uh, and uh, with more improvements uh, to show several results about uh, planarity so here is a result that you should remember. We, we proved one theorem in between, right? Uh, as part of a proving uh, attempt, we proved another theorem, which is that a planar bipartite graph has at most 2n minus 4 edges. So keep that also in mind. 